it might sound real strange to you guys because how I started, it, turned, it was a Tuesday, I found out I wasn't pregnant again. Something inside me just snapped. I've been trying for a child for many, many years. And my heart was so broken, I just thought, I don't care what happens to me anymore. I might as well get paid for sex. I went along K Road. And my first client, he was from Scotland. He turned up in his white van. And um, after about 20 minutes, we went and did our business. And I didn't know what to charge because it was my first client. I, he, I got, said $60. I found out within about two weeks, I should have charged him 80. And I thought, that was as quick as $60 I've ever made. This is so easy to do. It probably started when I was about 18. I got pregnant and I left New Zealand for any girl who needed, um, any woman who needed abortions. Got on a plane and went to Sydney. And back then that was what was, what was the in thing to do. I didn't keep the baby. I didn't keep the baby because I, I didn't, I was um, confused, I was young. Had the abortion, <coughs> which was quite traumatic for me. But my faith didn't really come about really until August the 11th, 15 years ago. I got invited from someone in this church to, um, who was a former pastor. She used to see me up in K Road, and she, didn't, she knew I was an alcoholic, but one night she caught me red-handed prostituting, and I didn't know until a long time later, she cried for me. Her face kept coming into my head. And I thought, what's going on here? I'm trying to prostitute, and this minister's tormenting me. That's how I felt. I'd had enough. I was tired. About a 20-year 20, 20 break. Because I had my son and I never wanted to go back to work. But I kept my son because I didn't want to lose any more children. And there were these tears in my eyes. And I just knew I couldn't prostitute that night. And I thought, maybe I meant to talk to Marjorie. So I walked across to the phone box. And the phone box is still on K Road found Reverend Marjorie Gibson, hopped on the bus by Grafton Bridge there, hopped off in Balmoral, which is a local suburb, went to a gas station, found where her street was, and turned up on her doorstep. And I don't know who was more surprised, her or me. And I still remember to this day saying, Marjorie, can I borrow five minutes of your time? It turned out to be a God ordained appointment because she wasn't meant to be there. She was meant to, her meeting was cancelled or whatever it was, she was there. And I ended up talking for two hours with her and told her things that none of my closest friends know about. When you get into a sex industry, you do things that you never imagined you'll do. I didn't give my heart to Jesus that night, but I knew something happened because the next day, I woke up and I didn't, I didn't want to prostitute the following night. We're in the papers here, sold next to car sales. There's car, cars for sale. Right next to that is all the, all, all the girls' names, all the false names, of course. You know, they're in the flat. This is our number. Wherever, motels, oh, God knows. There's nothing good about it, even though people think there is. There's nothing glamorous about it at all. 
the government is trying to make it a normal occupation. It's never going to be normal. What's normal about selling your body? The eyes are 60, the nose are 59, abstention one, the bill will be read a third time, unlock the bill. It doesn't get any closer, but all it takes is one vote more than your opponents to change the rules. But the main, my main strength comes from God, because if it can help someone else, but there's hope. I mean, this world needs hope today. And uh, if sharing about it gives someone some hope, great. You know, I mean, I don't want to see people go through what I went through. Every day, say a prayer. One, one, even if it's a simple prayer, God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. The first time I heard that prayer years ago when I first went to rehab, I had no idea what it meant. I couldn't understand, it, and I was embarrassed to ask anybody what that meant, but I, could stick, I, I prayed that all the time. But I had no idea what it meant, and it took me a while to understand. So I started to accept that I can't change him or her, or, but I can change me. Courage to change the things I can, and the only thing I can control and can change is me. When you know your past has been cleaned, there's a verse in the Bible, though your sins were crim was it crimson red, they can be white as snow. And you know, I've never been married, but if I ever get married, I'm going to get married in white. You know, I mean, I'd love to get married one day. All my, I mean, all my friends know I love Americans. And I put on Facebook the other day, I'd love to get married to a black American. But I go, a white American would be okay. And at my age, even a Kiwi will be okay. You know, but I, yeah, but, and I'll get married in white. And, and, and when I walk back down the aisle, I'll have that old disco song, celebrate good times, come on. Yeah, my heart has changed.